XZNY has just released a 280 amp hour and a 310 amp hour compact design 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. And we're gonna check them out this time on Ham Radio Tube. So this is really exciting guys. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are getting smaller and they're getting cheaper. To put it into perspective, this is a 100 amp hour kind of standard size 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. And this is XZNY's 100 amp hour mini compared to these giant 300 amp hour sized lithium iron phosphate batteries, but in a compact form. I love that all of these batteries are getting smaller. But they're also getting cheaper. This 280 amp hour as I'm filming this on Amazon currently retails for $599.99, but there's a $90 off coupon plus another 5% off uh, at checkout, making this $479.99 before tax. The 310 amp hour retails for $659.99 on Amazon. There's a $60 off coupon and another 5% off at checkout, making it $566.99. So clearly the better value is the 280 amp hour because you're only getting another 30 amp hours for $87 more. So clearly the 280 amp hour wins in the price war. Now, as far as weight, these are considerably less than my old 300 amp hour batteries that weigh about 75 pounds each. The 280 amp hour weighs 54.8 pounds and the 310 amp hour weighs 57.2 pounds. Now, aside from price and capacity, both of these batteries are gonna ship the exact same way and they're gonna come with the exact same accessories. They're gonna include a couple cards. This one here is telling about your usage experience. This one is just uh, kind of their info card. You've got a warranty and support card. They offer a three year warranty on these and you have a user manual. Now this user manual is okay, but there are some glaring problems. For example, under the controller page, they talk about charging with 24 volts when this is clearly a 12 volt system. So definitely some lost in translation stuff there. And under voltage and state of charge, they mentioned the rest voltage may not reach 28 volts. So it looks like they're mixing up the 12 volt and 24 volt batteries. So they definitely need to proofread their manual before putting this out. It's also gonna come with these little battery caps here for protecting the terminals when in transit. And you're gonna get two different size lugs. You're gonna have a 15 millimeter size, which I find is okay if you're connecting like one wire to this. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle to connect my two one aught gauge uh, copper wires with this. I basically had to push down really hard to get the lock washer to kind of squeeze down. And I only got about one turn of threads in the terminals there where the other terminal lug they come with is 30 millimeters long, which is really longer than I would expect anyone to use. Uh, and as you look here, this is way too long to put my two one hot gauge wires in and have them tight. So if they just added a few more millimeters to the 15 millimeter, maybe a 15 millimeter and a, a 20 millimeter terminal, I think that would be better. I don't see any use for this longer one, but that is what we get. It looks like they're using the same BMS in both of these. Your cutoff discharge voltage should be 10 volts. Recommended charging current is 40 amps. Max continuous charge current of 200 amps. Max continuous discharge 200 amps. A peak discharge of 500 amps for three to five seconds. Maximum load power 2560 watts. And it does include low temperature charge protection for both of these. And we're gonna test that a little bit later. And speaking of testing, the first thing I do when I get any new battery is a capacity test. Do you get what you pay for? I discharged each of these at 10 amps and the 280 amp hour battery, I pulled 295.76 amp hours and the 310 amp hour battery, I pulled 326.93 amp hours. So both passed the capacity test with flying carpets. Interestingly though, the BMS is rated at 10 volts for a low voltage cutoff. In my test, the 280 amp hour cut off at 9.12 volts and the 310 amp hour cut off at 9.19 volts, making 2.28 volts per cell on the 280 and 2.29 volts per cell on the 310. Ideally, we'd really like to see that voltage closer to 10. The closer we get to two volts, the closer we are to damaging the individual cells. Two volts is kind of like you done messed up your battery. 
we're pretty close to that. So I would really like to see that BMS closer to 10 volts so we're not kind of getting towards that danger line of damaging the cells. Now I want to test the over voltage protection of the BMS. So I've got a variable voltage power supply here. You can see it's set to 13.3 volts. The bottom line is going to show us the current. So I'm going to plug in the 280 amp hour battery and we'll go ahead and raise the voltage. So right now we're not pulling anything. The BMS says it should cut off at 15 volts. So there we are, 15.3 volts, still not cutting off. Let's just keep going up. There we are, right at 15.8 volts, it just shut off. So that worked. Now let's do the exact same thing with the 310 amp hour version. Go ahead and up our voltage here. There's 15.3, let's keep going up. See where it cuts off? Oh yeah, it shut off right around, right around the same place. So good. Both batteries have over voltage protection that works. Now let's see what kind of current we can pull out of these. These are both rated of a max continuous discharge of 200 amps. So I want to make sure we can at least do that. The peak current is 500 amps for three to five seconds. Unfortunately, I don't have a way to test that. The max I can pull is about 270 ish. So we're going to go ahead and do that. See, uh, see if anything heats up, if anything uh, catastrophically fails. But as a control right now, the terminals are about 82 degrees here, 82.6. So we'll go ahead and begin our test. We'll go ahead and turn the system on, turn the inverter on, and we'll start with our space heater here. We'll go ahead and kick in the heat gun on high, pull in 2,360 watts, about 210, 211 amps. The watch would help. I'm gonna let this go for a few minutes and we'll see what happens and then we'll kick on. I've got a vacuum here so we can get more current, but I wanna see what this is gonna do right around 200 amps. And there we are, just over five minutes. Terminals, terminals actually feel really good. They don't feel hot at all. 90 degrees, so we raised what? Eight degrees maybe, if that. That tells me that the wires inside aren't too small. If these terminals start heating up, there's usually smaller wires in there that can't handle the rated load and this passed it with flying colors. So now let's try a little bit more current. I'm gonna turn the heat gun, the space heater and the vacuum on. So let's start with the space heater Then we'll turn, I'm gonna turn the heat gun on low. because my, my inverter can't handle all this on high. So we're about 250 amps now, 248-ish. Let's see if, see if that does anything. And honestly, if the BMS was gonna shut off after 200 amps, it would have done it by now. I think we're probably gonna have to exceed that 500 amps to get the BMS to shut off from overcurrent, which is expected. Uh, so let's try the 310 amp hour now. And now we've got this guy set up. Everything's still a little warm. I've let it cool down for about 10 minutes. So we'll just take a base temperature here on these terminals, about 85 degrees. And we'll go ahead and run our tests on this. Kick on the space heater and the heat gun. And we're seeing about 205 amps. So we'll let this go for five minutes and see what happens. Now we're pulling about 207 amps, so everything's fully cranked up, 208 amps, 208, 207 amps, somewhere in there. All right. Five minutes has lapsed, handled it no problem. Yeah, a few degrees warmer, five, six degrees warmer, no big deal. Handle it like a champ. And just for consistency's sake, we'll go ahead and turn the vacuum on. Get a little bit higher current, see what happens. There's about 244 amps. Again, I don't expect the BMS to shut off, but got to keep things consistent across the board. Yeah, so that doesn't really tell us much, but it can handle 244 amps. I wouldn't recommend that, but yeah, everything seems good. You can tell the BMS is right here. A little bit warm, but just ever so barely. Good. And now we just have to test the low temperature charging protection. When these batteries fall below 32 degrees, the BMS should prevent charging, which will protect the cells. 
So I'm gonna put each one of these individually in my 12 volt freezer set to the lowest setting, which is generally gonna be around 18 to 20 degrees. And I will see you when the 280 amp hour battery is frozen and then we'll do the 310. And now we have a nice frozen 280 amp hour battery. We've got our amp meter here. Hopefully we don't see anything. I've got a 20 amp charger that is off right now. And hopefully the low temperature charge protection works. Let's find out. Here we go. Nothing. Charger didn't even turn on. No current going through. Low temperature charge protection works on the 280 amp hour. Now let's try the 310. And now we have a very frozen 310 amp hour battery. Same setup, 20 amp charger. Let's go ahead and flip it on in three, two, one. Nothing. Beautiful. XZNY has delivered yet again, because their 100 amp hour mini uh, was also very good. And just small, compact, low price, big energy, and it does everything it says it does. That's fantastic. What can you complain about? So I will leave links for both of these in my Amazon store if you want to grab one of these. And in the meantime, thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike. We'll see you next time.